going on guys, it is me Scanaman here, back again with another review video for you guys. Today we are going to be reviewing the Corsair K70 RGB. Now as many of you know, this keyboard has been out for a considerable amount of time now, but however, I've only just raised enough funds to get my hands on one of these bad boys to review. Now this is my first venture into mechanical keyboards, but after only two days of use, I can safely say I am never going back to a membrane or chiclet style keyboard. Also with 100% anti-ghosting and N key rollover, this keyboard is a weapon for gaming. The Corsair K70 RGB comes with three different choices of keys, Cherry MX Reds, Cherry MX Blues and Cherry MX Browns. Now the Cherry MX Reds are a very linear feeling switch with a, the same actuation force for each different key press. Cherry MX Browns are very tactical and quiet and then you have Cherry MX Blues that are very tactical with a loud click and are quite audible. In the end I went for Cherry MX Blues because they offered the nice tactical click and feedback that I really wanted from a keyboard as it, in my preference, a nice tactical click is what I think a gaming keyboard should sound like. The K70 RGB also features a nice polling rate adjuster which allows you to change how many milliseconds the keyboard is polling for keystrokes and also has a BIOS mode enabling the keyboard to work with older BIOSes. Now one of the big visual factors of this keyboard is that it is fully RGB backlit under every single key. Corsair and Cherry got together and specifically designed the switches that are in this keyboard to fit a full size RGB LED diode and also whilst they were at it decided to make the key casing clear plastic instead of black in aid of better light brightness. These LEDs can do many effects and I haven't quite yet delved deep enough into the Corsair utility software to find out the full extent and use of these RGB LEDs. However, I use the Mega Rainbow Profile which is enough and surprisingly doesn't distract me during gameplay. The LEDs have four levels of brightness counting off because I class this as a level and overall I think the LEDs really make this keyboard shine because without them it just looks lifeless. The build and finish of this keyboard is exceptional, I mean it really is. Just look at the finish on the aluminium. Unlike the Black Widow Chroma from Razer, the K70's backplate is made of aluminium instead of plastic which gives the keyboard a high quality premier feel. Also it offers more professional look over Razer's plastic used on the Chroma. The wrist rest has a really nice rubber textured coating to it which makes long typing or gaming sessions comfortable. The keyboard features an impressively nice volume roller which is handy to have. Last but not least, the keyboard attaches to the PC through a 6 foot long fully sleeve cable and kudos to Corsair for using a really high quality sleeving material. The keyboard has two USB connections that, can, that plug into the PC. Use both connectors if you're running through USB 2 but if you choose to run through USB 3 you only need to plug in the, the connector with the keyboard imprint on it. Once hooking the keyboard up to your PC you should head to Corsair's website straight away and download the latest version of the Corsair Utility Engine software. Now I'm not about to do a huge long video detailing every single feature and ability inside the Utility Engine software software because if I did you'd be here for a good 20 minutes plus. So here's just a small rundown of what it's like for a novice user like me. So this is what you are greeted with when you first open the Corsair Utility Engine software. Three tabs, Assignments, Lighting and Performance. Assignments is the tab where you can assign any of the keys on the keyboard to do a particular purpose of your choice. If you didn't know already, this keyboard is 100% reprogrammable, making this Assignments tab the best choice because you can go through and individually select any key and reprogram it to do your individual purpose of your choice. The next tab is Lighting. Now here you have different profiles and you also have a mode. So mine is currently set in the default mode which comes with the Mega Rainbow profile. Now I ha also have different profiles like Adobe Creative Cloud which has the Premiere Pro mode which only lights up the keys for Adobe Premiere Pro. I also have Poison, Rainbow Fireworks which is you can click a button or a key and it will make almost like a firework come out from the keyboard. I've got Sonar which is like a sonar as it rotates around and I've also got Underwater which is another type reactive one when you click a key it ripples out from it and also my default is just set to a single blue which you can also change by going to the lighting tab so just to go for a whole block color you can select all of the keys and hit red or whatever color you want mine is set 
as blue. Now, obviously, my main profile is the Mega Rainbow profile, which to get it actually coming, well, to set it as your default, you need to go to here and click set as defaults. And also you can save this profile to the device's memory so that every time you boot up your computer, it comes up with the same colors. Although if you do close the Corsair software or you turn your PC off and reboot, the colors will be still until the Corsair software reopens. Now with this profile, this is all of the different assignments and rainbow keys for all of this particular lighting effect of this profile. To import profiles you can go up here and click import and I've got a folder called Corsair K70 profiles and then you just double click and import them and then you can open them up here. And then performance is basically just what it is. You've got obviously got the windows lock and disable alt F4, disable alt tab and disable windows key which you can do on the keyboard with hotkeys or you can do it in the software. So that's pretty much just a rundown of what the software is like to use. It's not intuitive at all as I thought as I've heard many of the reviewers say about this software but however if you watch quite a lot of videos in advance before getting the keyboard and people who have done advanced software overviews you get the hang of how to use it as a novice user if you just want to import and use profiles if you want to make profiles and it's going to be a lot harder but you can learn elsewhere another cool feature of this Corsair utility engine software is the ability to link profiles with other programs so take my Adobe Creative Cloud CC profile now I have actually got the Premiere Pro mode in which is the only mode that I have for this. It originally did come with Photoshop and After Effects but I deleted them because I mainly wanted Premiere Pro. Now obviously you can set it as your default profile and it will be that all the time or you can do what I did and link it to a piece of software or a program. So all you need to do to link it to a program is to go to edit profile and then click link to a program and then find the actual program. So for me, I had to create a shortcut and then link it to that shortcut. So now if I open Adobe Premiere Pro, it instantly swaps to that profile once I open Premiere Pro which I think is pretty neat. Last but not least, after coming from a flat HP chiclet style wireless keyboard, the Corsair K70 was a really nice change, and that change didn't surprisingly take very long to get used to. I don't regret making the decision of going for Cherry MX Blues, even though they may be loud, but they are just my favorite switch and are just exactly what I hoped they would be. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you really like this video, show it some love by hitting the likes button, because it really does help. This video took quite a long time to put together anyway guys keep your eyes tuned to the channel plenty more content coming in the next couple of weeks and months and as always guys i will catch you in the next one